The new Mars Hydro FC4000 Evo is the first LED bar array from Mars Hydro designed for 4x2 grow tents. A 4x2 is my preferred tent for home growing, and it's been an underserved segment of the market. The FC4000 Evo looks like it will be a popular choice for 4x2 growers. It features the popular new Samsung LM301H Evo diodes. It has more than enough power to light up a 4x2 space, and you can set the dimmer and schedule the timer in the cool Mars Hydro app. I'll run it through some PAR and EPAR tests, and we'll see how well it performs. Hello, growers. I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. I do independent grow light testing to help growers understand and evaluate horticultural lighting. Check out all of my test reports and grow light articles in the Grow Light Guide at CocoForCannabis.com. If you're looking for a light for 4x2 coverage, you'll want to stick around for this. The Mars Hydro FC4000 Evo is great for 4x2 tents, but my tests reveal that you may not want to run it at full power. I'll show you how you can get the most out of this light. If you're looking to buy the FC4000 Evo, use discount code CCFC on MarsHydro.com, but you also have a chance to win it. As always, I give away the light that I test during the live premiere on YouTube. If you're watching during the premiere, guess a three-digit number in the chat, and you could win this FC4000 Evo. If you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. The FC4000 Evo arrives in a pretty small, thin box. I'll disappear with the outer box. Inside, there's a cardboard protector, and then everything else. Here's the Mars Hydro branded driver. It's already attached to the light. There's a separate power cord, and a little pouch with a hanging kit, the manual, and then the light itself. As you can see, it's already fully assembled. There's nothing to unfold or put together, just one solid piece. Let me lay everything out. All right, there is everything. First, we have the Mars Hydro driver. I've been impressed with the performance of these drivers. There's a dimming box on the right, and it can also be controlled by the app. We have the accessories bag with the hanging kit, the manual and power cord, and of course, the FC4000 Evo. I like the simple design, just three fixed bars with no moving parts. And of course, they use the Samsung LM301H Evo diodes. You see them arranged in three rows on each bar, with individual 660 nanometer diodes spaced among them. The Evo diodes are renowned for their efficacy, so I'm excited to see how well this light performs. They include a simple hanging kit with two ratchet pulleys, but for my tests, I like to use four ratchet pulleys. I'll clip them all in and then raise the FC4000 Evo into position. I'll plug in the power cord and turn it on. It's a nice looking fixture. The diodes are somewhat concentrated towards the ends of the bars. That should help generate a more even spread of light. There are 3000K and 5000K full spectrum diodes. They are the Samsung LM301H Evo chips. Spaced between them, you see the red glow from the 660 nanometer diodes. Each bar has a total of 255 diodes. With three bars, that means there are a total of 765 diodes. The published power draw is 320 watts, so at full power, there are 2.39 diodes per watt, or about 0.42 watts per diode. At that power level, the diodes will be somewhat less efficient than their published statistics. I'd like to see more diodes on a 320 watt light, or perhaps less power on a 765 diode light. Remember that diode count matters at least as much as diode model. It'll be interesting to see how it performs in my tests, but before I run the tests, I need to let the diodes warm up and stabilize. While we wait, let's check out the published stats. This is the FC4000 Evo product page on MarsHydro.com. You can see it's listed at 320 watts, and the list price is about $320. Of course, be sure to use discount code CCFC for a discount. Let me scroll down to find more information. Here you can see they publish a PPF of 871 micromoles, and a photon efficacy of 2.85 micromoles per joule. Let's run these numbers through the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator and see what we can really expect. This is our tool to help growers evaluate and compare grow lights. The calculator estimates the amount of light, the ideal coverage area, and the harvest potential for any grow light. And the calculator on the right 
I load the test data for all the fixtures that I test. In the calculator on the left, you can enter data provided by manufacturers for any light. The FC4000 EVO has a power draw of 320 watts. With discount code CCFC on MarsHydro.com, your price will be about $310. I will assume that the data Mars provides are calculated values, and the calculator will adjust to estimate the values that you can achieve in practice. They publish an efficacy of 2.85 micromoles per watt, but since it's a calculated value from a manufacturer, the calculator estimates that only 2.09 micromoles per watt will reach the canopy. That would be a usable PPF of 669 micromoles, which is enough light to cover over 10 square feet, more than enough for a 4x2 for sure. And we estimate that you could harvest up to 500 grams. That's well over a pound. The calculator is pretty accurate, but we still need to run the actual tests. For our official PAR and EPAR tests, I set the Mars Hydro FC4000 EVO in a 4x2 test area. I adjusted the hanging height until the maximum PPFD at full power was exactly 1,000 micromoles per square meter. The hanging height is 48.5 centimeters, 19 inches above the sensor. I ran the official PAR test with the Apogee SQ500 sensor, then I ran an EPAR test with the Apogee SQ610 sensor. EPAR is extended PAR. PAR, or photosynthetically active radiation, is defined as light from 400 to 700 nanometers. However, recent research has shown that far red light from 700 to 750 nanometers is also photosynthetically active. So the better measurement of photosynthetic potential is EPAR, which is light from 400 to 750 nanometers. The FC4000 EVO does not have any diodes dedicated to far red light. However, full spectrum diodes put out a small portion of their energy in the far red wavelengths. For that reason, the EPAR densities are always higher than the PAR densities. EPAR is the better measurement but we'll check out the PAR map first. This is an absolutely fantastic PAR map. It has everything you want to see. Maximum PPFD in the center of 1,000 micromoles per square meter. The lowest values are in the corners, and they're way up in the mid-800s. It is an almost perfectly uniform distribution of perfect density light. Let me switch to the EPAR map. EPAR measures all the light in the PAR range plus far red light. There's not a lot of far red light, but the values all went up. The distribution gets an A+, but we have to run the numbers to see how well it does in terms of photon efficacy. The hanging height for these tests was 48.5 centimeters, about 19 inches above the sensor. That is the height that delivered a maximum PAR density of 1,000 micromoles per square meter. In that PAR test, the average density was 923.8 micromoles per square meter. In a 4x2 test area, that converts to a usable PPF of 665.1 micromoles. That's almost exactly what the calculator predicted. In the EPAR test, the maximum density was higher at 1,040 micromoles per square meter. The average density was also higher at 961.7 micromoles per square meter. That converts to a usable ePPF of 692.4 micromoles. I measured a power draw of 331 watts during the tests. So the FC4000 EVO delivered 2.01 micromoles per watt of PAR light and 2.09 micromoles per watt of EPAR light. I am very impressed by the distribution, but I expected better efficacy numbers. I think there's probably too much power. 330 watts is a lot of power to put into a 4x210. It leads to a high hanging height and great distribution, but also low efficacy. The big selling point for the Samsung LM301H EVO diodes is their efficacy, but they're only going to be efficacious at a lower power draw. As a general rule, I suggest growers look for grow lights with about three diodes per watt. That level of power allows the diodes to run closer to their maximum efficacy. The FC4000 EVO has 765 diodes. Three diodes per watt would give a maximum power level of only 255 watts. I lowered the dimmer on the FC4000 EVO 
until my power meter showed a draw of 255 watts. It is about 75% on the dial. Then I lowered the FC4000 Evo until I got a maximum PPFD of 1000 micromoles per square meter. The new hanging height is only 27.5 centimeters, 11 inches. I ran a new PAR test and a new EPAR test. The lower hanging height makes sense and will be more convenient for many growers. The main benefit of an LED bar array is that it distributes the light well without being hung high. At a lower power setting, the diodes will be more efficient, but there will be less light around the periphery. That also makes sense. It will never be efficient to have corners in the mid-800s when the maximum is only 1,000 micromoles per square meter. In a real way, excellent distribution is at odds with excellent efficacy. But I like that the FC4000 Evo has the ability to be run either way. Let's check out these maps. The coverage in these new tests is really impressive. Granted, the edge and corner values did drop, but we're at about 75% power, and the corners are still in the high 600s in the PAR map. In the EPAR map, the corners are in the low 700s. Of course, they are slightly lower densities than we got in the first test, but this is plenty of light to grow an excellent crop. To understand the big advantage of running the FC4000 Evo this way, we need to see the numbers. Remember, I dimmed the FC4000 Evo to about 75% for these tests, and I lowered the hanging height to only 27.5 centimeters, 11 inches above the sensors. At that height and power setting, the maximum PPFD was 1,000 micromoles per square meter. In the PAR test, I measured an average density of 837.1 micromoles per square meter. That converts to a usable PPF of 602.7 micromoles. In the EPAR test, the maximum density was 1,040 micromoles per square meter, and the average density was 877.5 micromoles per square meter. That's a usable EPPF of 631.8 micromoles. At 75% on the dimmer knob, the FC4000 Evo hold 255 watts, so the photon efficacies are much higher than in the first set of tests. The FC4000 Evo delivered 2.36 micromoles per watt in PAR range and 2.48 micromoles per watt in the EPAR range. These are very respectable numbers and more in line with what you would expect from a fixture with top-end diodes. If I had the FC4000 Evo in my grow, I would run it like this second set of tests. The real benefit of the LED bar array style is that it distributes the light well and you can run the fixture close to the canopy. The real benefit of the Samsung LM301H Evo diodes is that they're very efficient. If you run the FC4000 Evo at full blast, then you don't realize either of those benefits. However, you do not have to run it at full blast. Dim it down to 75% and lower it to 11 inches and you will have an excellent spread of light and a much more efficient grow. I have a few other things to tell you about the FC4000 Evo. You can find all of the maps and data, along with my written review, on the test report page in the Grow Light Guide on CocoForCannabis.com. Here are the data from the official EPAR test. The photon efficacy is average. The coverage is excellent. At full power, the FC4000 Evo can cover 10.7 square feet, and we estimate a benchmark harvest potential of 18 and a half ounces. Here you can find our discount code and the shopping link. Shop MarsHydro.com and use discount code CCFC. Your price will come to about $310. That gives the FC4000 Evo a cost efficiency of 45 cents per micromole. It's more expensive than some lights, but it has better components and more power. One lucky grower is about to get the one that I tested for free. As I mentioned, the only issue that I have with the FC4000 Evo is that there's just too much power. I do not recommend running it at 100% or 320 watts. It performs superbly at about 75% on the dial, when the power draw is just 255 watts. So the winning number in the PAR Test Premier giveaway is 255. Congratulations to whoever guessed the closest number during the live premiere. And if you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you do not miss the next one. 
below the test data and the space calculator, you'll find my written review. The Mars Hydro FC4000 EVO is an exciting new light. I'm glad there's a new option for 4x2 tents. It has excellent distribution and puts out a ton of light. I think 320 watts is more power than you need in a 4x2 space, but I have no problem with holding some power in reserve. I don't drive my car as fast as it can possibly go, and you don't need to feel like you need to run your grow light at 100% power either. In fact, if you have a grow light like the FC4000 EVO, it really makes sense to run it a little dim. Of course, I also tested the dimmer. I ran the dimmer test with a fixture at the official hanging height, 48.5 centimeters, 19 inches. As you can see, the dimmer is quite accurate. The PPFD and EPPFD are just slightly higher than the dimming percentage at each setting. And remember, you can control the dimmer two ways. There's a dimmer knob on the control box, and there is also a wireless app for your phone. Just download the Mars Hydro app and open it while the light is on. The app will discover the light and connect to it. You can set the dimmer level right in the app. You can also set the timer in the app to control when the lights turn on and off. Finally, I measured the surface temperatures. Surface temperatures are not directly related to the amount of heat that a light will add to the space. With 320 watts of power, the FC4000 EVO will add about 1,090 BTU per hour. We want the light to give up its heat to the air so that the light itself does not run too hot. If the light itself runs too hot, then it will lose efficiency and longevity. Fortunately, the FC4000 EVO does not run hot, even at full power. The maximum temperature that I measured on the LED bars was only 42.3 degrees Celsius, 108.1 Fahrenheit. The Mars Hydro driver got slightly warmer at 52.5 degrees Celsius, 126.5 Fahrenheit. I really like the FC4000 EVO. It's a great new option for 4x2 tents. My only issue with it is that it's overpowered. Of course, the dimmer gives you the option to correct that. I strongly recommend running the FC4000 EVO at less than full power. It can generate an excellent spread of dense light at 75% and only 11 inches. With only 255 watts, it will put out less heat, and running that close to the canopy can really help when the plants get too big. It is efficient and convenient, and the light is dense. At Coco for Cannabis, we always put the grower's interest first. Our goal is to provide impartial, science-based testing interviews for growers. You support our work when you use our codes to purchase grow lights. If you have questions or want to chat with me, I do the Ask Dr. Coco show every Monday night for my Patreon subscribers. Check me out on Patreon, Dr. MJ Coco. I'd like to thank Sean at Mars Hydro for sending me the FC4000 EVO to test. And thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next Par Test Premiere giveaway. And if you want to win a light, we're always doing grow light giveaways on the deals and discounts page at CocoForCannabis.com. Check it out. And while you're there, you can read our articles, chat with the community in the chat room, join our next grow challenge, or try your hand at the grow light calculator. Grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.